Hey guys, today I want to discuss uh, a technique of, dr of driving uh, MOSFET with uh, negative voltage uh, instead of zero. So um, basically uh, the fact is that uh, normally when you have uh, a MOSFET uh, you use uh, a voltage uh, square wave between uh, zero and five volts. Zero or some level like that. The problem is that uh, when there is uh, a great, uh, a long path, uh, let's say that uh, this is your controller, LTC, X, X, uh, I don't care. And let's say that you have uh, this long path here or this long path here. And this path, uh, and let's say that here you have your MOSFET, uh, they get you of your MOSFET G. And all this path here is basically inductance. And, uh, if, and uh, if this rise time is very steep, uh, you can have uh, overshoot, but also undershoot here. It may happen that uh, in uh, this uh, this ringing uh, may be higher than 1.2 volts, 1.5 volts, in extreme rare cases. I can show you this on the, on the latest spice. Now there are a lot of application notes uh, in which state which states that uh, instead of doing uh, 0 5 volts. Uh, you can do minus one, five volts. There are advantages and disadvantages of doing this technique, which we will discuss in this video. But first, let's. Uh, but first, uh, let's. Uh, uh, let's, for instance, uh, simulate a back converter. So let's use the MOS, the two MOS here, and uh, the input voltage with uh, twenty volts. Let's include uh, everything that we need. Even a, even a basic simulation will do. Let's put uh, 100 micro. Let's put a uh, medium load of 10 ohm. Let's call this uh, output voltage. I need some space here. And uh, let's insert as few elements as possible. Okay. Okay, so this should be enough. Let's just put the, the input voltage, uh, the input capacitor, the micro. And I think uh, that's enough. So let's let's use dot param d equal to z dot five and dot param the time equal to twenty nano and dot param switching frequency to five hundred kilohertz. Now the first thing that we want to do is to have a an half bridge configuration like this and to put the most basic uh, pulse between 0 and 5 volts. The rest time, let's put uh, 10 nano and full time 10 nano on period D over the switching frequency and the period just 1 over the switching frequency. Okay, uh, that's for the high side part. Because in the back converter, the high side uh, as is the main switch. Naturally, uh, since there is the dead time, we want to to subtract some time in the T on by putting minus TD here. Now the same happens here, but you have to write uh, one minus T because it is complementary and. Uh, a delay of uh, D over FS. So if you do run the simulation now, you don't exp you don't have uh, nothing new under the sun. It is just a basic back converter. You run the simulation for two milliseconds, which should be enough. And the output voltage goes to 10 volts, which is the input voltage of times the duty cycle D which is 0 
and as you can see you have uh, nothing new under the sun naturally there is some loss because uh, you have the, the, there is some uh, drop here because you had the, the time but uh, nothing new under the sun so this is our starting point now what we want to do is to add some inductance some parasitic inductances let's switch because i like in this way uh, let's put some parasitic inductances uh, a way big parasitic inductance like 10 nano uh, generally speaking this inductance here is uh, 3 4 5 nano 10 nano is very very high so you usually don't have so much high parasitic inductance but if you check the node voltage here you will start to see something not very reliable meaning that you're gonna have some undershoot and overshoot Oh, come on, I don't want to wait uh, 2 milliseconds each, each time. But as you can see, you're gonna have some undershoot and overshoot. For the overshoot, uh, unless that it is higher than 15, 20 volts, uh, it won't destroy the gate. You can even put uh, the transorber here if you, are, if you think that uh, it's not enough. But uh, the most common solution is to put... Uh, uh, is to put uh, a series resistor here of one two ohm it can be designed but uh, the most important thing here is that uh, the case is big and is, is big enough to sustain the power dissipation and if you put uh, the the resistor as you can see the the ringing is gone most of the ringing is gone but sometimes uh, it can still happens that uh, this ringing is so violent uh, i just put 30 nano just for uh, just for uh, simulation examples uh, that even uh, that even the, the um, even the um, even the resistor may not be enough and so there are some application notes which states that this that another solution to prevent uh, false turn on uh, is to uh, is to have a negative driving voltage so you start with minus one instead from zero. This has one big advantage. So the first advantage is that uh, even if you have some ringing here in the in the negative in the zero point, uh, and if this ringing goes to one dot two, at minus one this ringing will go to zero dot five, and it won't cause the turn on of your device. So. If you we if you re, if we replicate the same circuit and we start by putting an initial voltage of minus two, for instance, you will see that even though you have this spike to zero dot seven, now starting with two dot zero dot two. Oh yes, duplicate definition, and I don't care. You will see that even if you start with minus two you're not going to have any problems with false turn on. It's not that we have turn on in, in this case because uh, I put the resistor. But if you see this circuit, you will see what, what I'm talking about. You see that even if I have some ringing here, so let's uh, just for simulation examples, uh, just toggle the resistor. You see that even if I have the ringing, this ringing is not even uh, is not anymore a problem because uh, I now have uh, I now have uh, basically the the protection of the negative voltage, and so I don't have any problems regarding with the ringing. But uh, there is a there is a great disadvantage in this, and you can see in the output voltage. You can you will see a little difference in the output voltage. Now, if we check the output voltage at level two, you will see that something has changed. The output the output voltage level has decreased a bit, and uh, that's not uh, and uh, that's not a coincidence. 
If you check the switch in node voltage in both waveform 2 and the switch in node 1, you will also see a difference. Take a look Take a look at the time. So take a look at this. You see that the green curve, you see that in, in the green curve, which is which the node N004 is this, you can check by putting N004 here. So this is the N004, the switch one. It has a less the time than the blue curve. And it's not a coincidence. If you if you if you see the green one has basically 22 nanoseconds, which is the dead time that I put here, 20 nanoseconds. But if you check the blue curve, it has basically twice the dead time period as the, as the one. As you can see here, we have 0 0.7 volts as, um, as voltage, meaning that, that in this period is conducting with the battery diode of M1 and of course M2. So basically, having a negative voltage prolongs the dead time. But why is that? It is not a coincidence. To understand this, we have to check the, the gate voltage, even, even the original gate voltage, I, I don't care, and also the, ch and also the charge given... Ah, uh, we always spend so much time to... <clears throat> Okay, here you can see the difference. So basically, the the reason why you have an extension of the dead time in the second waveform is because the voltage level to reach the threshold, which is, uh, I, if I remember, if I remember, is uh, uh, around two volts, is not the same for the for the same gate voltage. Sorry, it's not the same for the two waveform because the the one which starts from the minus two volts has to take more time to reach the threshold voltage and you can even see this problem with the charge which is giving v6 and the charge giving by v3 let me um let me give another zoom extent and you will understand that the charge is given more by EV6 than EV3. And now you can see clearly. The current given, the current given by EV3, which is this, is less than IV6 because it starts because starting from zero ensure a fast charge than starting from minus one or minus two, like in this case. Now we can put uh, the minus in, in each one and we can uh, clearly see the difference in charge. Remember that the charge is always current times uh, current times uh, time. So now you can see that the the charge given by IV3 is a lot less than IV6. This will call, and this is caused by the delay caused by negative voltage. The, the, the delay, of course, it, it is higher as it is higher the rising time. If I increase the rising time, and this depends on, on your microcontroller. So let's suppose that your microcontroller has a, a rise time of 50 nanoseconds, which is totally which is totally possible, even 100 nanoseconds as a rise time, which is totally possible. The delay will, will become even more significant.
This emulation is a lot slow. Now let's check. Oh, again. Now let's check the the delay again. Okay. Now let's check the delay again. Of course, the the reasonment uh, of the charge still holds, and the delay, of course, it has increased. As you can see, there is a difference of uh, there is a difference of uh, even twenty nanoseconds. So there is a difference of, of basically at that time here, which is a which is a lot, which is a lot. And uh, if you check uh, the switching waveform, uh, you will even see this difference in here. So, of course, uh, VN004, which is the switching one, no one has uh, a lot less uh, dissipation than, than the output one. Now, if you check the voltage, I have always to wait. If you check the, the output voltage, you will see an even greater difference. Out one. Not again. Let me clear everything because I don't want to. Oh, okay. Thanks. We are losing some voltage here. So now you understood basically the problems with uh, driving uh, a MOSFET with negative voltage. Some designers still choose to uh, to drive a uh, MOSFET uh, with negative voltage uh, and some decide to do not. So it's up to you. My suggestion is uh, that you do a, a good design, you reduce the distance between... Uh, so when you select uh, an LTC, uh, a back controller, for instance, and now I don't have. Uh, let's go in power products. When you select uh, yes, one of one of the control, one of the analog controller like this, and you. So basically, when you select one of these controller, the distance between the switch one and BG one has to be very, very low. So you select the controller, you try to put the MOSFET as close as possible to your linear controller, and you reduce the inductance here. So if you do this, you won't have to, to worry about negative voltage. But still, I thought that this was an interesting video to do, and I think that we can close the video here. Thank you guys for your attention and see you in the next video.